Welcome to The Extra on KRDO News Radio, the show that connects you with the topics and issues and people that are important to you. And we all always love having her in, Catherine Hammond. Hammond Law Group is here for her monthly visit. Hello, Catherine. Good morning, Renee. So good to be here. Sorry, I'm eating my little chocolate donut holes. <laughs> I need my I'm nutrition. Just, I'm just jealous. <laughs> well, we have a lot to talk about today, including the caregiver course. We'll touch on that. You've started a whole Before I Die campaign, which we're going to talk about that. And we're also going to touch on real estate. What a huge part of people's lives. Right. And then having to assure the things to deal with after someone's life. So we'll touch on that too. So, But I think we should start with the huge Before I Die campaign that you have launched in Colorado Springs. You may have been out and about in certain places and you're they're big boards, aren't they? They're huge, four foot by eight foot boards that say, before I die, I want to, across the top of them. And have a lot of people been writing down their kind of hopes and dreams? They have been. Um, so they, they're chalk boards, and we left both white and colored chalk at all of the locations. Currently, they're in four locations. There's a fifth that is going up as soon as we get the city permit finalized for that one. So really, I mean, the background is it's a worldwide community art project. It was uh, first done in New Orleans by Candy Chang and then now has been done in about 3,000 cities worldwide. Wow. And as far as we could tell, it had never happened in Colorado Springs. And what people have found about this whole Before I Die project is that it's a great community builder. Yeah. It's an opportunity for people to really contemplate death, yeah. to contemplate life and the meaning of life, and to have their dreams and sometimes their pain witnessed by writing it on a simple little chalkboard anonymously. Um, and so the things that I've heard, the manager at the park downtown uh, where we put our second board uh, told us the first day that it was up, he was sitting there with his back to the board, listening to the conversations and people talking even in line about, you know, what do you want to do before you die? And the, the conversations that it brings up. But what, the most powerful thing to me that has happened is um, I, I took innocently took a picture of somebody the first morning that yeah. it was up at Plaza of the Rockies. And um, I sat across the lobby. It's in the South Tower at Plaza of the Rockies. And uh, watched people start writing on it. And I was so thrilled because that was what I wanted, a place for people to record their dreams. And I went over and took a picture of someone uh, with her uh, back to me writing on the board. And then um, watched somebody, watched the building people come over and erase what she had written. No, and you're like, don't yes, do that. That's exactly. not what that's there right. for. That's not what it's for. But it's in a private business and they have the right to censor it in whatever way they feel is appropriate. And so I posted the picture on Facebook. I was so excited. And I had seen the last part of what she had written on the board. I hadn't been able to read the first part until I posted the picture online and enlarged it. And then I discovered that it was a very painful statement, which oh. is why they had erased it. And it said, I want to do harm to the racist people of a certain group Wow! Um, for killing my soul. Wow. Right. And I mean, uh, I certainly am not in support of doing harm to anybody, but it was a place for her to express her pain and have it witnessed in the world. And that's what the boards are all about. So... And uh, obviously, we know why they they washed that right. off the board. Yeah, and the, you said that they're going. They're in four loca They're in three now, waiting for the permit for the fourth one. So, what locations are the before I die? I know it sounds bad to say the before I die boards, but that's what they are. And again, it's a way to yes. express your 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 wants, right. your you know your dreams, your vision of your life. Absolutely. So they are at uh, Plaza of the Rockies in the South Tower. It They are double-sided there, um, four by eight boards, and there are four of them, so eight sides. Um, the Perk downtown, and then Salsa Brava over easy over on Dublin and Powers. Okay. And then there's one at Briargate. We had to pull it down temporarily. Um, the Salsa Brava at Briargate. We had to pull it down temporarily. We're in the process of moving that um, to a location that allows better access to the restrooms. And then the fifth one is going at Switchback Coffee Roasters 
um, as soon as we finalize that city. So, and we'll also have some events. These will be up for the next several months. We have some events, some community conversations that we're in the process of planning um, to help bring us together and uh, help contemplate life, death, dreams, and uh, just serve as witnesses to each other. Well, so. if there's one thing that's true, that's true, we all die. That, that is a common thread for yes. all of us. Yes. And when, what a, a great way. I mean, over overall, have you seen a positive response from the community? It's been amazing. People yeah. get so excited when we put the ones up at Salsa Brava over on Dublin. Um, the second we finished and walked away, there were a bunch of kids who came running out of the restaurant excited to start writing on them. So, um, But adults are loving them too. And there's everything from the very frivolous um, to the very deep and sometimes painful. Right. So, Yeah, like that one was, yeah. Well, again, you can go and let's give the locations again. You got the plaza. Uh, yes, the Plaza of the Rockies in on which, Tejon, in which, and is it the, the South, South Tower okay. in the lobby, and then uh, the Perk downtown on Tejon, just a block north of the Plaza, uh, Salsa Brava and Over Easy up on Dublin and Powers, Salsa Brava in Briargate. That one should be um, reposted uh, by this weekend, and then Switchback Coffee Roasters should be up in the next two or three weeks. And then, you, you, as you guys said, you had, uh, as you said, Catherine, you have events planned. Well, where can they find info about the events? If you go to our website, coloradoestateplan.com, we have a page just about the Before I Die boards. You'll see something up at the top of the homepage. And uh, if you watch there, we will put um, notice out about the community events around that, and we'll let the media know as well. That's fantastic. Thank you, Catherine. And when we come back, I need to go check out the boards and leave a little note. And when we come back, we're also going to talk about real estate. Lots to it, isn't there? There is. Yeah. We'll talk about that with Catherine Hammond, Hammond Law Group, next on The Extra on KRDO News Radio. Welcome back to The Extra on KRDO News Radio. It is our monthly check-in with Catherine Hammond, Hammond Law Group. Catherine, we love when you come on because you bring such incredible information. And we know most people are homeowners. It's a big part of life, isn't it? Owning it a is. home. Yes. And even if you're not a homeowner, if you have a family member that has a home, you need to know what happens in the event of their passing. Absolutely. Especially if it's a parent. Right. Because they're aging. We're all aging, right? Yes. And eventually when they become incapacitated or pass away, we know at least one of those is going to happen to each of us. Yeah. Um, then how the real estate world works suddenly is going to impact you. So I thought it'd be fun to just talk about real estate today. No, it's a good idea. And, you know, be prepared, <laughs> especially with the market the way it is right now. I'm sure that affects things too. Right. So there are different ways to own a home. What are some of the different ways? So in Colorado, we have a few different options. One is joint tenancy with rights of survivorship. Okay. Another is tenants in common. And then the other one is sole ownership, if you own your home by yourself. Um, the important thing to know is that joint tenancy, when, when a, let's say a married couple buys a home and they say, we're buying it together, we're buying it jointly, they may or may not actually own their home in joint tenancy. I've had really? a lot of people come in over the years who thought that their house was owned in joint tenancy and it turned out that it was not or their parents died and um, or one spouse dies and surviving spouse suddenly finds out that the house was not in joint tenancy. In Colorado, the default way to own property if there's more than one owner is tenants in common. So okay. the law says if, you, if we deed a piece of property to you when you buy it, and it does not specifically say to. joint tenancy. Oh, okay. If it just says to the two of you people, it defaults to tenancy in common. And when one of you dies, the other one has to go through probate. Wow. So, okay. So if the deed does not say both the specific people's names is what you're saying. No, I'm saying even if it does give both okay. sp specific people's names, if it does not actually use the words... In, in joint, joint tenancy, tenancy or in joint, 
joint tenancy with rights of survivorship, then it's in tenancy in common. Wow. And then it has to go through probate when one person dies. Even though one person is still on that, the both people are still on that deed. Yep. yep. So to court you go. So people need to make sure that they have checked that. Now, if your right. deed says one thing, is it possible to get it changed? Um, absolutely. If both people are still alive and competent, you can transfer that deed from yourselves as tenants in common to yourselves as joint tenants. Or the other option for how you own real estate would be in your names as trustees of a revocable living trust. Okay. We do a lot of that in our world. There are a lot of people who, for a variety of re- reasons, are setting up a revocable living trust. This is one of them. It can make things a whole lot easier if you're incapacitated and when you die. So a lot of people, when they come into our office, when we discover that it's currently not in joint tenancy the way that they thought, we're in the process of transferring it into a trust anyway. But the more common time that we discover this is when somebody comes in, you know, off of the street after one spouse has died. Oh, no. And now, you know, sweet Sally, who just lost her husband, has to go through a whole probate process, and she had no idea. So let's start at the beginning, though. When they're looking at a home with your spouse, how do you decide the best way? I mean, is joint tenancy the best way to do that? That's a great question. Okay. Um, And... Sometimes joint tenancy is the best way. Sometimes it it is not. Okay. It just depends. And it depends on a number of different factors. Um, It's it's a very, very individual thing that I recommend. And I, I think most real estate agents are smart enough not to make recommendations to their clients. When you're buying a home, your realtor probably won't tell you how you should take title. Okay. Exactly what type of ownership you should have. Um, I recommend to people that you consult with an attorney and somebody who's familiar with uh, planning for disability and death. But some of the questions that are helpful to ask are, who do I want to receive my home when I die? Okay. That's going to determine some things. Am I in a blended family? Because remember, let's say that John and Susan have just gotten married and each of them we have their, divorced before they right. each have two kids if they put their house and their bank accounts and everything in to joint tenancy and then Susie gets hit by a bus then all of her assets end up with her husband and nothing goes to her two little kids so it's very important to look at like you said speak with an attorney first before absolutely so um, who do I want to receive my home am I in a blended family do we need to worry about estate taxes? If your estate is large enough, currently that's you know nearing the $5 million mark because estate taxes don't kick in until just over $5 million. Um, but once you're close to that level, you might want to consider not owning it in joint tenancy because that can inadvertently increase your estate taxes when the second spouse dies. Okay. So again, something to talk to an attorney with. Um, Is there anyone in your family, maybe a spouse, maybe kids, uh, who are disabled? If that's the case, then that can cause some issues. And then the other one is, you know, if I in the future have a brain injury or stroke or dementia, how important is it to me that my loved ones can sell my home and do whatever is necessary with that without having to get lawyers and judges involved? Right. Or like you're saying, going into court. Right. Okay. And when we come back, we have to take a news break. We're going to talk even more about this real estate. I'm sure it's another little thing to navigate, isn't yeah, it? there's a lot. <laughs> we'll have more with Catherine Hammond, Hammond Law Group, next on the Extra on KRDO News Radio. Welcome back to the Extra on KRDO News Radio. It's our monthly chat with Catherine Hammond, the Hammond Law Group, and we're talking real estate and kind of what it looks like, what you should decide going in if you're married and obviously or partnered and purchasing a home and what can happen because of the decisions up front after you pass. Is that the best way to explain it? <laughs> that is perfect. Yeah. So we were talking about joint tenancy and we were talking about, what was the other one? Joint, no. 
What's the other one? The second oh, one? Tenants in common. Thank you. And then there's soul. Yep. For owning a home. So what are the pros and cons of owning in joint tenancy? That's where two people are on the deed. It is acknowledged as joint tenancy. Yes. And so it says joint tenancy or joint tenancy with rights of survivorship specifically must have those words Otherwise, it's it doesn't not mean that, that they're Tennessee, both you're right. Okay, there are two names on there. So, um, the benefit to having things in joint tenancy, a piece of real estate, is that if one person dies, the other person just gets the property without having to go through probate or any kind of legal process. They just now own it. They record the death certificate showing that the other person has passed away, and now the deed is just in their name. So that's nice and easy, but. There are a lot of drawbacks to joint tenancy. One is that if either person becomes incapacitated, stroke, dementia, uh, brain injury in an accident, what you know, the stuff of life that happens, then the other spouse doesn't have the power to sell the house or refinance the house wow. or take care of things. You have to have the signatures of both people to do anything. So just because it's in joint tenancy doesn't mean that either person can take care of things when something happens. The other big thing that we touched on earlier is blended families. There are lots of blended yes. families. And if you're a blended family, you put your house in joint tenancy with your new spouse, you will probably be disinheriting your own children. Most people don't want to do that. In so joint you, tenancy, you would be. Right. Interesting. Right. Because it goes to your new spouse when you die. And nothing goes to your children. Even if your will says, I want 50% of my estate to go to my children or all of my estate to go to my children, if things are owned in joint tenancy with your new spouse, your children get zero. Nothing. And I bet most people don't know that. Yep. Going in. That's correct. And like you said, and then they come to you, unfortunately, after something, somebody becomes incapacitated, incapacitated or passes, and then they and find out all this stuff. there's no way to fix it. Right. Wow. Right. Okay. And so then also with joint tenancy, once the second person dies, so if first spouse dies, it automatically goes to the surviving spouse. Okay. But then when that person dies, it still has to go through probate when they die. So joint tenancy skipped one probate, but it does can't, not doesn't skip. skip all of the probates. So now can somebody put, um, say, not a spouse in joint tenancy? on their house to avoid probate. Um, like say you planned out, like you're saying, okay, the kids are not gonna get anything if I'm in, but if I put my kid, I insure, right? They're, skip probate, here's the house. Does that- That's such a great question. Does that work? So here's the, the problem, it sounds great. It's really easy, it's really cheap. You don't have to talk to a lawyer about setting it up in your estate plan that way, but do not do it. Ever do not put anybody else's name besides as a, joint a spouse owner on your property. Okay. Even a spouse you don't necessarily want to do can cause extra taxes. There are all kinds of issues. But with with somebody other than a spouse, I don't know of a single situation where I would recommend it because real life happens. And so now when real life happens to the other person, that your is not, very responsible yeah. daughter, your nephew, whoever it is, they could be the most trustworthy, responsible person in the world. But so I have a friend whose daughter was driving down the road a few years ago in uh, someplace other than Colorado Springs and slid on the ice and ran into um, somebody who died. Mm. It wasn't that she was being careless, but that family sued her. They were upset, of course. They sued her. If she, if that daughter had been a joint owner on mom's bank accounts and house and investments, all of that would have been gone in that lawsuit. So probably that's not going to happen. Those accidents don't happen very often but the real life everyday stuff, let's say I put my very responsible daughter onto my house as a joint tenant, and then she and her husband get divorced. And that oh, happens unexpectedly. Right. Now, if she is a one half owner of my house, Can who now the ex -spouse? owns one quarter of my house oh, my after gosh, the divorce. Yeah. I have some clients whose, um, whose cousins in Minnesota ended up losing the family farm because they put their daughter onto the family farm as a joint owner 
and then daughter got divorced, and that divorcing son-in-law was able to force the sale of the family farm. So obviously, don't do it. Don't do it. Just don't, don't do even it. think no about it. Just don't do it. This person is life can happen to them too, and then it happens to you. Okay, and what can happen? You know, you know, I sold my house, but the thought always crossed your mind, even though I was sole owner. Uh-huh. It, what happens if I become disabled? Especially right. if you're in joint tenancy, or you know, what what happens if I become disabled, mentally right. incapacitated? Right. So, if, if you become disabled. There's nobody else who can sell your house or refinance your house without your signature. And if you have a stroke or a brain injury or dementia and you can't sign anymore, that means that we have to uh, do a living probate or conservatorship and guardianship, which is what I had to do with my mom. That's how I ended up in the probate court the very first time was um, as you know, the daughter of somebody who needed to move into a nursing home. But I had to sell her house to pay for the nursing home. And so I had to hire a lawyer and drag her through the conservatorship and guardianship process. It takes time. It takes money. It's humiliating. It's a hassle. And then it's ongoing. The right. conservatorship yes. lasts and guardianship lasts for the rest of your life. Right. And every year we have to file annual accountings, get permission from the court if we want to do anything differently with the money, get permission from the court to sell the house. Well, yeah, it's it's ongoing, ongoing, intrusive and burdensome. And before we go, we're going to have to take a, another break here. Can a family uh, like you're saying, say somebody becomes disabled, incapacitated, you have to send them to a home mm-hmm. like you did with your mom. You could sell the home like you did with your mom's. Right. But you have to go to court. Right. Exactly. And so it's through that conservatorship and guardianship okay. process. I just and want to make sure, yeah. And then the court decides how that money is going to be used. And a lot of people think, well, gosh, if I go to a nursing home, maybe my family can just keep my house, especially if you're married. Right. In which case, your spouse can continue to live there. But if you're not married or if your spouse moves into a nursing home, then they can't keep the house anymore. We have to spend every penny down to the last $2,000 before Medicaid will kick in and help pay for your nursing home care. So many questions. A lot to know, isn't it, Catherine? And when we come back, we're going to wrap up with Catherine Hammond from Hammond Law Group. You do have some estate planning workshops coming up. Also, we have to talk about the caregiver course and a lot more. We're chatting with Catherine Hammond, Hammond Law Group on the Extra on KRDO News Radio. Welcome back to the Extra on KRDO News Radio. We've got a few minutes left with Catherine Hammond, Hammond Law Group. And Catherine, I think it just, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think most people think, and this is for people to check with their parents, to check with their spouses, check with anybody that they might be a caregiver for and find out the situation with the uh, house. Because I think everybody just thinks, oh, when they pass, I'll just get the house. Right. And that's for this thing from the case. It's not what happens. Um, And I mean, first of all, we don't know exactly who's going to get it and it won't necessarily happen quickly. So if there's not a surviving joint owner, it goes to whoever you named in your will. If you had a will, if you didn't have a will, it goes to whoever the state has picked for you. And it has to go through probate on the way there. And so probate on average takes about nine to 24 months. Yeah, It's a hassle. It takes, when you look at all of the fees, including executor fees, publishing and bond fees, court fees, lawyer fees, all of that, even for a simple probate, not unusual for it to cost at least ten to $20,000. Right. Yeah. I've had a lot of people tell me over the years, the lawyer got everything or almost mm-hmm. everything, and we got nothing. Right. Because of the probate. Because of probate. Yeah. And I guess the biggest message is just encourage everybody, again, check with your parents, check with your spouse. Just check and see. Right. And talk to a lawyer. Talk to a lawyer who knows about planning around disability and death. Even a lot of people do do do-it-yourself stuff, like Mm -hmm. a beneficiary deed. Beneficiary deeds sound great, but there are some real drawbacks to those as well. I'm sure there are. Talk to an expert. Like Catherine. Okay. So you do have the caregiver course, and uh, this is... We talked about this a couple months ago when it launched. It sounds like it is a huge success and people can still. Yes, people are loving it. So this is for people who have a parent or a spouse with any kind of dementia. 
and it's really planning based, planning around the um, housing, medical, uh, legal, financial, and particularly the emotional issues right. when you have a loved one with dementia. So there's a free little mini video series online at thecaregivercourse.com. Um, there are four full free videos on there, and then there's a full course um, available for purchase for anybody uh, that that would benefit. Well, and again, when you guys came in to talk about it, I mean, it seems more and more, and it's just maybe because people talk about it more, but there's more of the um, stuff with dementia, Alzheimer's, is it because I wonder, I, my guess is because scientists be, are becoming, and doctors are becoming more aware of exactly what is going on with it. It's hard to tell exactly if, if we're just getting better at diagnosing yeah. or um, if it really is becoming more prevalent. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the Alzheimer's Association. They're working hard um, to find ways to make living with it um, a little bit easier and, more importantly, to help us um, completely avoid the problem in the future. So right. they're working hard on research and uh, it's a huge problem for our whole country. So. It really is. And we do need to talk about your upcoming workshops. As always, you have the workshops. And it looks like you have another estate planning workshop coming up. It's on Wednesday, November 1st. And then a, another one on November 4th. Yes. Wednesday, November 1st. Saturday, November 4th. You can go to our website at coloradoestateplan.com. Or call our office at 719-520-1474. And can they, are they free, the workshops? They are completely free. We even provide cookies and coffee. That's fantastic. <laughs> Any other workshops coming up? Uh, yes, we have a Medicaid planning workshop in the beginning of November, and I apologize. Um, I don't have the exact date of that. I think it might be November 8th. But if you call our office, we can get you signed up for that. If you're over 50, it's a topic you need to be familiar with. How does Medicaid plan into whatever care I might need if I have a health crisis? Because any of us can have a health crisis. At any time. Yep. And that's actually going to be our topic uh, for next month, uh, 50 and over. Yes. Need to knows with Medicaid and nursing homes. Catherine Hammond, always great to talk with you. And how can everybody get a hold of you again? Uh, our website, coloradoestateplan.com or uh, call our office 719-520-1474 and go write your dreams on the Before I Die dream boards. boards. Yes. Four locations right now all over yes. Colorado Springs, soon to be five. Yep. That's fantastic. Thank you, Catherine Hammond. Thank you. And coming up tomorrow, we are going to be joined by Cheyenne Mountain Zoo. What projects do they have going on? And of course, some fun events on the way as well. That's tomorrow on the Extra on News Radio.